Hey everybody, Chris from Varsity Gaming, and welcome to a preview video of Operation Phantom Sight. Today we're going to be going through the cafe rework, and I'm going to be showing you guys the differences between the current map that you guys are able to play right now in Ranked, and the new map coming out with Operation Phantom Sight. Now this video was only made possible because Ubisoft flew me out to San Francisco to try out the new season and record it, so big thanks to them. While I was there, I was able to capture footage of me walking around the map from the inside, and also seeing it in the spectator view. Unfortunately, the capture with the spectator view did fail, so we're only going to be showing you guys the walking around footage. But either way, it doesn't matter, I'll still be able to show you guys all of the map. Now let's get into it because there is a lot to cover. First, we're going to start with the outside of the map. First, on the north side of the map from the River Dock spawn, you can already notice a few key differences. The second floor window on the far left side has now been removed. And the first floor window on the left side got moved over one segment. This change was made to help boost the new site on the map, which is the reading room slash dining room site for bomb. And now that that window's gone, people won't be able to just repel there and stare inside the objective site. And the first floor window was moved because of the new staircase, which we'll show you when we get inside. Moving over to bakery on the north side, one of the windows has been removed. However, if you go around to the east side by Christmas market, all of the windows have been removed. With the bakery bomb site being mixed up, this won't be a huge factor because you don't necessarily have to take control of all those windows in order to win the site. Now you actually have to push inside. But besides those windows changes, the west side is pretty much unaffected. Now moving over to the south side, we have a few key changes. The double window going into the bakery connector room is now gone. This window was a huge factor for bomb play and now is going to be completely non-existent. Even though it's boarded up, there's still a way to get intel. There will be a drone hole close to the window so you can send your drone right into the kitchen site. But with one drone hole getting added, one has to get removed. So if we move over to the second floor by white stairs, right above the little garage, that drone hole is now gone. The reasoning behind this, I believe, is the exact same as with the big window being removed on second floor on the north side, is that it's to make the reading room site more viable. As it stands on the current map, it was very easy to repel there, on the garage and then just peek right through a drone hole to kill anyone walking by. We also have one window being removed on both the second floor and the third floor. On the second floor we're losing the eastmost window going into dining room and on the third floor we're losing the westmost window looking right into the bathroom. Now moving over to the east side we have a change up on the windows here. On the third floor there used to be two windows on the east side going into the east side of bar right next to one of the bombs. Now, the rightmost window has been removed, and now a new one has been added on the far north side of the east wall. It is right above the door that goes into pillar room, which will allow defenders to easily break it, jump out, and then run right back in. And the one removed window on east side will allow defenders to have an easier time holding that objective site. Now lastly, we'll move up to the roof, and we can see a few changes here. First off, a new hatch has been added called electrical hatch or e-hatch, something like that. This new hatch will disrupt a lot of the linear gameplay that was pretty prominent in the current cafe. And the other big change on the roof is that the skylight no longer has glass on the side. So if you're going to peek in from the roof, you're going to have to do it either from the hatches or only on the north side of the skylight. No more pixel peak angles looking onto the sides of bar. And that's it for the outside of the map. Now let's go inside. Alright, now moving inside, we're going to work from top down. We're going to first talk about the third floor, which, out of the three, is the second most changed floor. There are a few sections that are completely unaffected. If we look at the south side, we have the white hallway, the bathroom, and the cigar lounge. All of these are unchanged. But the north half of the floor is pretty drastically changed. Currently, if you push in from red stairs, you'll be inside cigar shop, which is a tiny little room which you can't do too much in. Now this room is being opened up. The north side wall, which just used to be a corner for attackers to hide in, is now opened up. There's a new balcony there that overlooks the pillar room. This is where the new electrical hatch will drop into. It's a pretty open area, so it's very privy to defenders easily picking you off as you drop in or push in through there from the other balcony. Now if we move into the bar area, for the most part it's fairly unchanged. The main bar next to Skylight stays almost identical. The real changes are on the east side. Moving over there, we have a new balcony on the northeast corner, which before just used to be a huge chunk of unused space. Now there's a balcony next to the new window that's been implemented. And now the east side bomb site has walls around it. Instead of being completely open concept like it was before, there's now walls actually surrounding the site so you can tell which site is which. There's actually one more change in bar that I should note. 
the hatch that was in cold room slash freezer is now gone. And lastly, if we look over at white stairs, there is a new railing system being implemented there. Instead of the typical thin black poles that we're used to, it's going to be converted into a full metal half wall that goes up the entire staircase. So it'll be very, very hard for attackers to push up if defenders are holding that. It makes it almost impossible for the attackers to see the defenders unless they're standing up looking over the railing. But that concludes the changes to the third floor. Now we'll move on to the second floor, which personally I think is the least changed floor out of all of them. Now going through second floor, each of the rooms did receive at least one change for the most part, but they're fairly minor. I would not say that the changes are as drastic as the third floor. But anyways, let's begin. With train room, we have a few changes. The trains have been slightly modified and changed color, and drones can now go underneath the middle train. A bigger change, though, is that the entire floor is now destructible. This means that attackers or defenders can open up holes in the floor to see from train room into kitchen. In the map's current state, the only destructible floor was in dining room. Now the entire floor is opened up a lot more. Now we're moving into mining room, it's received a few modifications. The same thing as train room, the floor is now completely destructible. And the biggest change, they removed that little lamp post sitting next to the mining wheel. Now you can't hide your drone on top of that. But really that's about it. If we move over to red stair hallway, we can see there's still the hatch from cigar shop dropping into that hallway. Which is the exact same hatch that's been there since the beginning, unless you're kept flanked and you forget about it. Oh, well, there's a hatch right here now. Did you see that? That's always been there. What? Oh my god, flanked. But moving on, we'll move on to Pillar Room, which was received decent amount of changes. The bar staircase is now completely gone. It's been replaced by, I want to call it like marble stairs, which is on the north side of the room. This now connects the lower bar to the second floor. Where the old wooden staircase used to be, it's now just open area. It feels a little empty. I feel like they might add something here in the future. But that's it for Pillar Room moving into Reading Room. Something that I almost missed during the recordings, the north side walls are now completely indestructible. These three walls used to be soft walls that you had to reinforce, and now are completely rock solid. Now these three walls aren't the only ones being changed. Also in Reading Room, we have two walls that used to be half destructible walls becoming completely indestructible. Where the wooden staircase used to be coming up from bar, there was two walls that could be destroyed so you could completely freely move through there. And then there were two other walls that were only half destructible, which means that if you were to throw an impact or put a breaching charge, you would destroy all the wood, but the metal bars would stay. Now these two half destructible walls have become completely indestructible. And like I mentioned, the hatch that drops into this room is now gone. Now going into laundry room, I hadn't noticed any changes, so as far as I'm aware, it's still completely the same. But that summarizes the second floor. We're now going to move on to the first floor, which I think has received the most amount of changes out of any of these floors. Alright, so first floor. This has a lot of big changes, so we're going to start with a familiar side, the White Stairs Garage hallway area. This hallway, for the most part, has been unchanged. The garage has a new texture, the staircases are a little different, like I said, but the hallway itself is fairly normal. The two things that have changed though is that the wall connecting the freezer room to the hallway has been modified from three reinforcements to two reinforcements. And how before the white hallway used to connect to a longer hallway going straight to kitchen, that hallway has now been removed. Where that hallway used to be is now a part of site. So in order to get towards the kitchen you have to go a much longer path. And this path takes us through a few new rooms. Next to the white hallway we have VIP section which is just a little modified version of the room that's currently there. It has two separate doorways, so it's a little more walled off than it currently is, and it has a different layout. But overall, it still serves for the most part the same purpose. Moving more north, we go into the dining room, which is not to be confused with second floor dining room, but basically this is the bar area. Like I said, the staircase has been moved from over top the bar to across from it, and the bar positioning has been opened up a little. There is the new window that I mentioned earlier that jumps right into this room next to the stairwell with a little bit of cover, so if you jump in there you don't have to worry about someone sitting on the staircase and just staring at you. But overall the room is a lot more closed off. It's not as huge an open concept as it was before. Going to the front door from the north side we have the reception area which is just a small little room with a podium and a little window that goes into the coat check room right next to the red stairs. Before this used to just be completely unused space in a random wall, but now it actually has a purpose. Moving over to bakery, this has been changed up 
pretty drastically. Bakery is now split into two rooms, kind of how Clubhouse Bar got split into two rooms. The main bakery is fairly untouched, it just now has a new separate section on the north side, which is mainly just all the seating area. And like I mentioned earlier, the one window has been removed. So now you only have one window to jump in through in Bakery. Moving over to Connector Room, the big window from the outside has been removed, but now there's a big window going from Connector into the kitchen. Which, kitchen, I don't even know how to describe it, has received just so many big changes. One of the big changes is the reinforcements, whereas before there were a lot of three reinforcement walls, most of them have been changed to two reinforcements. I mentioned the one in the cooler, that one's two reinforcements. Now the wall facing into bakery is also two reinforcements. So it's not as difficult to reinforce site as it once was. Before, a lot of people would struggle to have enough reinforcements unless your team was coordinated. Now you don't really have to be coordinated, you can actually reinforce the objective. Now for the rest of kitchen, it's kind of hard to give everything a name because it's, for the most part, completely reworked, but I'll make my best effort to go through and explain what I can. So the kitchen has been split into two different sites. We have kitchen service, which is on the east side, and kitchen cooking, which is on the west side. The service section is the one that incorporates the old part of the white hallway. Where that hallway once was is now like a grilling slash sink area, I don't know what to call it. A bunch of little half walls to hide behind. And the cooler room has also been integrated into the service. Now instead of being completely walled off with only one door to get into, it has one door facing the north side and a double window facing the west side. This will allow attackers who either breach in through there or drop through the hatch to have more options to go through, instead of being forced into one doorway. Now moving over to kitchen cooking, this is the same site that it once was, it's just been mixed up a little bit. We have two long kitchen counters with three walls around it. The walls on the east side are just walls between the site. So those walls can be easily opened up so you have line of sight between both objectives. And then on the south side of the room, it faces into the connector room, which just has a giant window. So it'll be much more difficult to hold off that hallway than it currently is. So as you can see, a lot of big changes happening in the kitchen area. And some that we'll be able to see a lot more in detail and in action when we actually get to play it on the test servers or when it goes live with Operation Phantom Sight. But for now, that'll be it on the cafe comparison. I'm sorry that I don't have a lot of better footage to show you guys the changes. Like I said, I did have a lot of spectator footage that I want to use, but those recordings failed. So I had to go with the in-game walking around footage, which for the most part will serve its purpose. And I know that this map can be a little hard to grasp just by looking at it. I don't expect you guys to become masters of the map just by seeing this little walkthrough. But trust me when I say this, that cafe is actually going to be such an enjoyable map now. I don't know about a lot of you guys, but every single time I see Cafe pop up in my match, I just get so frustrated because the map is so boring as it stands. But with these changes, a lot of the issues with it are being addressed. The map is no longer super linear, you can take it multiple different ways. And each of the objective sites are actually viable instead of it just going from top floor to bottom floor. Now I think Kitchen might be more viable than the bar, which is crazy to think about for Cafe of all places. So trust me guys, this map will be amazing, and I can't wait for you guys all to see it in Operation Phantom Sight. Thank you guys for watching, I'll see you in the next video, take care.